I will call the uh, December Com Common Council meeting to order. Uh, all members that are here present this evening have reported doing so. Uh, next item on the agenda, item three, is a Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a silent prayer in lieu of invocation. So if you'd please stand. Next item on the agenda is the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Move to approve, put them on file. We have a motion, is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? That passes. The next item on the agenda is item number five, the explanation of the visitor speaking procedure. I want to welcome all of you in the audience who uh, took the time out of your evening to be here tonight. Um, the speaking procedure is as follows. If you wish to speak on an item on the agenda, uh, you will be able to do so following being recognized by myself or a council member. Um, if you're willing, if you're interested in speaking on items uh, related to the Planning Commission, which I, number, I know a number of you have expressed wishing to do so, uh, wishes to do so, that uh, we will recognize when that time is appropriate too, so you're not left guessing uh, when that time is appropriate. Um, so with that said, make sure uh, when you do come speak and you are recognized that you do so, uh, announce your name, your address, uh, and uh, make sure you hit the button on the mic so you're able to be picked up for those watching uh, here tonight at home. Uh, from home. All right, item number six, a presentation by Encourage Community Foundation regarding the old Tribune building. Uh, we had a request uh, a number of weeks ago uh, to, to uh, speak to the council uh, as a whole uh, on the, as an update on the uh, former Daily Tribune building project. And uh, at this time, I wish to uh, invite whoever is willing to speak to us this evening to come to the podium. And again, make sure you hit the push button, mic, and introduce yourselves uh, so that way we know who, uh, who is speaking. Christy, can you use the um, microphone of the podium just so Colton and back can pick it up? Thank you. Yes, I can. Um, so thank you so much for having us. We are, we are really, really excited to be here just to share a brief update about the work that's been done over the past few months around the former Daily Tribune building. Um, very quickly, my name is Christy Anderson. I'm one of the project managers um, on this project. I am joined today with Steve Grant. Galen Riggenbach, Kyle Swanson, and Karen Ganazzi. We are all um, part of the project team and, and again, really, um, really glad to be here. So just a, a quick overview. Um, we purchased the building in December of 2012, so just over a year ago. And we knew that we wanted to purchase the building um, to let the community decide really what it might become. But we weren't exactly sure what that process would look like. Um, so we went looking for national examples um, of people who have created multi-use spaces and sort of resident-led um, design projects nationwide and discovered a, a design group, Concordia, um, out of New Orleans, and contracted with them to help us sort of figure out what a, a resident-led engagement process might look like um, around, around construction and adaptive reuse. So they came in, um, and upon their suggestion, we went out looking for community members who might want to join our team, and that's how um, we've had the pleasure to work with Steve and Galen and Kyle and two other community members. Uh, the Community Fellows goal is to bring as many people into this process as possible, um, and to date we have had over 300 people attend community meetings and even more attend tours um, or show their support via email or Facebook or Twitter or any, any other engagement opportunity. So we're thrilled with that um, and it's thanks to the work of these folks here many people who have attended our meetings are actually in the room with us today um, so thank you to anyone who is in the audience who has joined us at a meeting uh, this is their work the the work of the community members who have been attending these meetings um, that's why this process has been able to to be such a 
such a success, excuse me. Um, so after hiring the community fellows in about August, September, um, we hosted our first public meeting in October, and I know that some of you may have seen updates about that, be it on our website um, or via, via email, and so I'm actually gonna hand it over to Steve and Galen and Kyle, and they're going to share very briefly about what's happened at the meetings, how many people have attended those meetings, um, and what the activities looked like, and how, how people have been, been helping out. Okay, thanks, Christy. Um, glad to be here. Just going to give you an update on what happened at the first meeting, which occurred on October 8th. And really, the, the objective for that first meeting was, uh, number one, to make sure everybody had a, kind of a common understanding of, first off, what our assets and the great things that we have in Southwood County uh, that, that exist today, and also to start thinking about um, some things maybe that we're missing that uh, might end up in the Tribune building at some point down the road. Uh, so to do that, um, we worked in small groups, uh, tables of about eight to ten people, and each table had a, had an asset map that they were working on, um, and those assets were divided into eight or six categories: um, physical assets, social a assets, educational, cultural, economic, and organizational. So each table was tasked to work on one of those categories. Uh, for example, my table, uh, our our asset that we worked on was the physical asset. So those were things like our natural resources, our parks, our recreation areas, um, our, the river, of course, and our infrastructure such as our highways and bridges and communications. That was our target. So we reviewed those maps and the lists of, of assets that are existing today and then look for uh, missing pieces to, to make sure that that was uh, up to date. And I think it was a good process um, because a lot of folks, even in our table, mentioned, you know, I never knew we had a state natural area, for example, out by Pittsfield. So I think it was a good exercise to, to get some common ground to start from. And then the bulk of the meeting then was a brainstorming activity um, that you're probably all familiar with, the post-it note type of, a, of an activity. And the goal of that was to, to come up with as many ideas for the possible future uses of the Tribune building in the area around the building. Um, so Anything was fair game. Uh, we were hoping for lots of ideas, uh, but we also at our tables organized those ideas a couple ways. One was uh, whether or not an idea was brand new to the area, something we were missing in the community, or whether or not an idea was uh, maybe a duplicate or there's an existing um, idea out there or, so, or something in the community that this new idea could maybe partner with. Uh, to improve or what have you. So um, that was one way we organized the ideas and the others were based on uh, whether or not an idea would be a, a full-time uh, year-round use of the Tribune building or perhaps just a part-time use like a seasonal or a, um, a weekend type of use. So our outcomes, I guess I'm supposed to be hitting this, aren't I? Yep, just click, click on the left button. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I skipped the slide there, but um, uh, the outcomes are from that first meeting. First off, we had a great, uh, a great attendance. 210 people came uh, that far exceeded what we were hoping for. We had a lot of enthusiasm in the group, and as you can tell, um, we supported the paper industry that night with uh, almost 1,000 Post-it notes being generated with ideas. Um, but as, as you can imagine, a lot of those post-it notes had very common themes and ideas, so you could break those down or whittle that down to about 168 uh, unique ideas for the use of the Tribune building. Uh, and you could further break that down into 12 major categories, things like a commercial kitchen, for example, or recreational rentals were some of those major categories. So the graphic up there um, just is uh, meant to show uh, some of those, I think 170 ideas around the outside, but then all the connections that a lot of those ideas had to, to other things that people came up with and other ideas. So um, there was great connection, I guess, and, and um, some good sharing of ideas. So I'm going to pass it over to Galen now to give you the next update. Good evening. My name is Galen Riggenbach, and I am one of the five community fellows. And uh, very honored to be part of this process and meeting so many great people in Wisconsin rapids and the surrounding area. The second meeting was actually held on November 12th, and uh, it was pretty exciting. What we did is they, what, what they did prior to the meeting is they gathered all of those post-it notes and they put them together and they came up with uh, those, uh, those 
uh, statistics, how many people showed up, how many post-it notes, how many unique ideas shared, and the major categories. And we presented those to uh, at the meeting at the beginning and then we started moving into uh, uh, another couple of activities and uh, the overall meeting goal was to move from what do I personally think is a great idea to what would serve our community so we moved from me to we and to realize that it's more about not not just about my own personal ideas but the process about our ideas collectively as a community and what our community needs are. Uh, so the act, first activity that we did is we actually, uh, I think, uh, there we go. This is actually some diagrams that were uh, posted around the, the walls. And well, the, the first circle one is we, uh, we looked at all of the different categories and we started having meaningful conversation about uh, what it is that we could, uh, what those uh, ideas could possibly be. So from 168 unique ideas, thoughts were organized and reviewed based on 12 major categories. And we briefly considered every idea presented at all the tables uh, from meeting one. And it was pretty exciting because we started seeing some synergy and uh, at each table had different people with different backgrounds and different things that they wanted. We were starting to see some fusion coming together about, uh, so there was, it was becoming uh, more feasible of what poss could possibly happen at the Tribune building. And the second activity, what we did is we, as a table, we had 10 votes that we needed to present or that we needed to post on the wall on what we felt was uh, most uh, most important and uh, to our community. And so the outcomes of that, we, we had 225 residents attend meeting two. There were 281 votes casted uh, on the top 10 ideas. So there was 281 top 10 ideas. Uh, they, I, I, they voted on 44 different ideas. We made 200 uh, different connections between those ideas and came up with eight major categories, and which will uh, lead into what Kyle is going to be presenting about what happened with meeting three in those eight categories. <clears throat> So meeting three, we got to roll up our sleeves and get to work on uh, December 10th. You can see an example here of one of the sheets we worked from. And our goal there was really to narrow the focus of the ideas. Um, we reviewed all eight major categories, which happened to be a community kitchen, recreation, maker space, flexible gathering space, market, music, entertainment, youth and teen, and uh, community information. Uh, we did one activity which we discussed any duplicative ideas that we saw there, considered any potential partners that already existed in the community, and also took into consideration anyone who might be um, able to take responsibility or kind of run that program. And then uh, one of the most important things from that was to further define and explain um, each of those categories on there in, uh, in more detail. So uh, most importantly, this idea was about defining these ideas for our community and what they mean to us. So there's just a few more numbers in there, and despite our frigid temp uh, temperatures we had that evening, there was 160 people who showed up for that one. And uh, it was uh, a lot of work, but it was a lot of great work. And you could see people who are very, very passionate about where we're going with this whole project. So our next thing for you here we like to do is personally invite you to attend our next meeting, which is going to be on Tuesday, January 14th. And that will be held at uh, 5.30 and run till 7.30. Uh, pizza and soda so you can come out and get a bite to eat and if you haven't been able to join us at any of the meetings at this point there's always a review beforehand that will uh, make sure that you're on the same page and the other attendees are always very happy to kind of bring you up to speed and help you along any information you might be missing and in the meantime you can feel free to uh, go on the web page which is tribunebuilding.org and there's a lot of information there posted online which will be available for your review um, I sort of had to summarize over uh, the results of the last meeting because that's still being compiled, that's still being put together, and a lot of that will be reviewed at the meeting and also available on the website. Do you have anything? Um, 
We're happy to, our contact information is on the sheets that we handed out. There's an email, a phone number, um, and our website, just in case anyone would like to um, reach out and ask us questions. We're happy, you know, if anyone has, has questions right now, we're happy to answer those, but we know you have a, a busy meeting as well. So really appreciate you having us. Council members, are there any questions or comments for the group here regarding the Tribune building project? All right, doesn't look like we've got anybody wishing to ask any questions. Just for our information, uh, I recognize a number of faces in the audience that have been a part of the process. Can I get a show of hands for those that have been participating in the project thus far? That's fantastic. That's more people that showed up uh, for this than show up when we pass our annual city budget. So I thank you for being here tonight. I thank you for your participation, your ongoing participation in the project. Uh, as a believer at firsthand in resident-led, resident-engaged um, processes such as this, I think it's very exciting to see what's happening and I look forward to attending the January meeting and we hope we have uh, some attendance by others, maybe on the council if their schedules permit. Alderperson Kellogg? I participated, in I participated in the second and third session and I really have to compliment you. It's almost like a, a happening when you're there to see all the people from the youth to the senior citizens to people from all walks of life and the energy and, and the Encourage Foundation and the uh, volunteers, all of them helping. It was a process that was really unique. And what's, re what's also beneficial is that in the future in this city, it's a great city, that other opportunities can occur with the same process. And I think it would just uh, enhance and bring everybody together. So I have to thank you. OK. Any other comments or questions? <coughs> All right, thank you for being here and thank you for attending tonight. Next item on the agenda is item number seven is the report of the Planning Commission meeting held December 2nd. The Planning Commission met at 5 p.m. on Monday, December 2nd in the first floor <coughs> conference room here at City Hall. All members were present. A list of others present is on file in the clerk's office. The first item on the agenda was the approval of the report from the November 4th uh, Planning Commission meeting. There was a motion and a second to approve the report and that motion carried. Uh, item 2A was a request by Stephen Clavine for a uh, vaca street vacation request in which the applicant was requesting to vacate uh, a portion of Clavine Avenue lying between 14th Place South and 15th Place. Uh, Steve Clavine was, pre was present for the item and he proposed to change Clavine Avenue between 14th Place uh, South and 15th Place South to a cul-de-sac uh, west of 15th Place which would allow one additional lot in a preliminary subdivision plat. Also there uh, will be reduced street and utility costs which will mean a lower special assessment charge. Uh, Clavine Avenue from 15th Place South to a cul-de-sac west of 15th Place South will be rededicated with the final subdivision plat, in which I would note that um, that will come back uh, in the form of an ordinance to the council at a future meeting. Um, that was the reason why Mr. Clavine was re uh, requesting the vacation request. And there was a motion and a second to approve, and that motion carried. Item three was a request by Miller Val Valentine Group, uh, which had an annexation request. Uh, the applicant is requesting an annexation of 4.45 acres on the northeast corner of uh, A Street South and Whitrock Avenue. Uh, parcel number 0700846B as in Bravo, 0700850, from the town of Grand Rapids. Uh, Mike Dekas, uh, representing the Miller Valentine Group, was present for this item. Uh, this group, on behalf of the owners of Mark Novak, uh, is requesting to annex the subject property into the city from the town of Grand Rapids. Currently, the subject property is vacant, with Two Mile Creek running along the northern boundary. By city ordinance, upon annexation, the property would automatically be rezoned R2, one family and two family residential district. Uh, the subject property is 4.45 acres, as mentioned, and is located at 3951 8th Street South. Uh, there was a motion and a second to a recommend approval of the annexation of 4.45 acres on the northeast corner of 8th Street South and Whitrock Avenue from the town of Grand Rapids, and that motion carried. Item four on that agenda was a public hearing on plan 130802 Miller Valentine Group. Uh, the applicant is requesting a rezoning pending annexation approval, which was granted at the previous and is here in front of us tonight from R2, one family and two family residential to B2, general commercial district. The subject property is located on the northeast corner of A Street South and Whitrock Avenue uh, within the city of Wisconsin Rapids. Public hearing was held on the request from Miller Valentine Group for the rezoning uh, from R2, one family, two family to B2. Um, speaking against the request uh, were uh, three individuals, Sherry Stotts, 3821 10th Street South, Ross Schultz, 3810 10th Street South, a legal objector, 
Uh, Daryl Butch Bensel, 2611 Griffith Avenue, owner of 40, 4111 A Street South, uh, also a legal objector. Speaking in favor of the request was Mike Deckes, representing Miller Valentine Group, on behalf of the owners, uh, Mark Novak, the requester, and Julie Kreitzer, 800 Ten Mile Avenue, uh, part of the group, part owner of the property in question. Um, item five was action on that plan. Mike Deckes, representing Valentine Miller Valentine Group, on behalf of the owners. I uh, was requesting a rezoning from R2, one family and two family residential district to B2 general commercial district. Um, the applicant is requesting to annex the subject property into the city from the town of Grand Rapids. Currently, the subject property is vacant with two mile creek running along the northern boundary. By city ordinance, upon annexation, the property would automatically be rezoned R2. Um, the applicant is requesting the change in zoning to allow for a planned multifamily residential development with up to 56 units. While the applicant has outlined their intended use for the property, it is important to note that if the requested rezoning is approved, it will allow the property to be utilized in the future for any of the permitted uses found within the B2 district. The subject property is shown in, as commercial on the comprehensive plan. The commercial land use category identifies areas recommended for commercial development. This would include retail sales, personal and professional services and offices. The request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. There has not been an established use of the property uh, in the past, and the plan shows the 8th Street corridor as commercial reflecting its high traffic numbers and overall trend of development. The 8th Street South corridor has developed as the primary commercial area of the city. Uh, after the request, after a request for comments was made to other city departments, the majority of the concerns or comments received were directed towards the proposed use of the property for multifamily use rather than the proposed B2 zoning. Uh, the primary summary, the fire department noted that there was uh, only one, hire, one hydrant um, across uh, State Highway 13 or I Street South uh, in which the, the apartments would need fire department connections and will require fire suppression systems by the fire code since they are proposed to be three-story. The engineering department has noted that currently there is no water sanitor, sanitary or stormwater laterals to the property. In addition, since the proposed developed is multifamily, the installation of sidewalks on Whitrock Avenue will be, will be required. Finally, there will be special assessments for water and sanitary mains. And the third and final uh, from departments were the planning department noted that the best, that based, on the, based upon the unit's proximity to Two Mile Creek, there are additional regulations that apply to the subject property. This is the first, this, the first is the city's floodplain ordinance. The second is the county's shoreland zoning ordinance. Subject property is proposed for annexation from the town of Grand Rapids and is currently vacant. Um, I've already read uh, the other consistent language. Uh, based upon the review of this request, staff did recommend approval. There was a motion and a second to recommend approval of the rezoning from R2, one family and two family residential pending annexation to B2, um, and the motion carried. Uh, the meeting was adjourned. Okay, so that is uh, the report of the Planning Commission held December 2nd. Um, recognizing that item 8 on the agenda, the next item on the agenda following the report, items 8A and 8B are, um, are uh, connected. Uh, I would entertain a um, discussion and the council would entertain a discussion based on those items. So um, with that, I would um, I'd entertain, uh, motion, uh, entertain motions, I guess, from the council members. Alderperson Kirkpatrick. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the balance of the report holding out items 3, 4, and 5. The motion is to approve the report with the exception of items 3, 4, and 5. Is there a second? Oh, I'll let Shane get caught up here. We have a motion. Is there a second? I guess we have the. We have a motion and a second to approve the report with the balance uh, of the report with the exception of three, four, and five. Uh, please cast. Is there any discussion? I guess moving before that. Uh, please cast your ballots. Motion carried. Seven A's and zero nays. Okay. With the balance of the report, items three, four, and five which to remind uh, council members, it's the Miller-Valentine Group annexation request, the public hearing on that, and then the action on that report. Um, any discussion? Any motions? Um, we have a motion by Alderperson Rayom to move for adoption. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Now we'll move into the discussion. Alderperson Kirkpatrick. Thank you. Um, there's many people here tonight that I'm sure wish to speak on this. I just want to say a couple things quickly, and then I think we can get into the act of uh, recognizing individuals to 
to speak their their minds on this thing. Um, I guess personally, I'm a little disappointed in the actions of the commission. In our own rep or in the report of the commission, it states subject property is shown as commercial in the comprehensive plan that this council passed. Commercial land use category identifies areas recommended for commercial development, including retail sales, personal and professional development services, and offices. We essentially have a residential building on the table here tonight. Um, the city's been working hard over the last several years, and I don't know, five years, 10 years, 20 years, I can't come up with an exact number, I just know that it's been quite a while, to get homes and residences off of the 8th Street corridor from essentially the expressway on south. With the idea that this is meant to be a commercial business avenue. And it says right in here that this is our, let me try and get the correct words here, um, the 8th Street South Corridor has developed as the primary commercial area of the city. So now we're trying to inject residences into the primary commercial area of the city, the primary commercial corridor. It, it seems to me that the only reason that we approved this with the all the information that's in the commission's report is that we're looking for additional tax base by annexation and that we are jumping at the carrot of proposed development without actually considering appropriate land use in a commercial sector. Now, a couple of other things occurred to me that if a residence were to go in here, 56 proposed residences, this will bring, obviously, will bring families and will bring children to the area and into that area. Uh, Dave Laspa can attend or attest to the fact that we have been working on the Highway 54 bypass project for how many years? You know, 20 or more, I would guess. I believe we started in 1995. Okay. Um, it's not quite 20. There was a report at one time that had stated that the congestion levels of 8th Street, as we know it, State Highway 13, are only set to increase to what the report claimed was close to unmanageable levels for the size of avenue that it is. And that the only way to alleviate those concerns was by the Highway 54 bypass. And, and I don't know, maybe Dave knows this off the top of his head, but I think that report stated that that time frame was somewhere around the year 2020. So less than 10 years from now. Um, well, we haven't updated the traffic, but it was supposed to fail in 2025, 2020, according okay. to the model. So just over 10 years from now. So you're looking at um, a road that 10 years in the future is going to have so much traffic on it that it can't support the infrastructure cannot support it. With, with a residence, a large residence here, families and children, you're going to see a demand immediately, or maybe not immediately, but within a few months to a year of a demand to lower the speed limit on 8th Street to what would be they would consider to be a safe and prudent speed. It's 35 miles an hour. It's a state highway. It's a primary access road through our city. It, it, essentially, it's the primary access road through our city, especially from the south. So now we've got a, a road that in 10 years' time is going to not be able to handle its traffic load, and in two years' time, they're going to want to drop the speed limit on it to backlog it further in a commercial sector on a state highway. And then it's going to come down that that wasn't good enough now we need traffic actuated signalization there to move the traffic. So now that backlog is going to be further extended. And there has been increased use of Whitrock, obviously, as developments have taken, taken place back there. And I have you know, heard concerns tossed out one time and another over the last few years from time to time about, about that intersection as it is now without this proposed development project on it. So I just want that to kind of 
weigh on the minds of the council as we consider this tonight that this development does not fit with the proposed use of that corridor as this council has seen fit to design it in the past. Looking at putting residences in a commercial sector. It's not feasible because of the traffic issues that may not quite be there yet, but they are. It's expected that they're going to come down the line and something along this line will exacerbate those issues and cause them to come forward much further. And let's face it, we're not going to get any money for a State Highway 54 bypass in the next two years. It's not going to happen. I'd be super surprised if it happened in the next 10 years. So I wonder what other areas were looked at within the city or within Grand Rapids. Were there any other areas that were looked at? Why were those areas rejected over this area? And can we revisit those areas? Areas that would be considerably more appropriate in already potentially residential areas or on, on a road that would not be so heavily impacted <coughs> as this proposal would impact that area. So I'm going to vote against this tonight. And I would strongly encourage the other members of the council to vote against this action tonight as it's presented because it's not feasible for the city. <coughs> the proposal, the residential, I have no issue with. We just need to find a better, more appropriate place for it. Thank you. OK. Um, I'd look to um, Adam Teagan, a member of the staff, and we also have the requester here this evening. I was informed by Shane that he has a presentation, a couple of slides that he may want to, um, at which point, Michael, if you want to make that known so we can give you the opportunity to do so. Um, I would um, speak to one of the concerns as a member of the Planning Commission, as a chair of the Planning Commission. While, that, while all the items are connected, they're also separate in the sense that you know, the first item, item three, is really the annexation request. And my comment would be, if this property will develop today, tomorrow, 10 years from now, it will need to be in the city of Wisconsin Rapids. So um, I would, uh, in my mind, propose or you know, recommend maybe to the council members to consider separating the annexation request um, from that, uh, only because of the fact that should it need to be developed, they will have to come, somebody will have to come back to this body and propose annexation again for water and sewer, provided they want water and sewer for the development. So that would be my only comment on that. The second piece is um, the concern uh, raised uh, regarding the consistency with housing on 8th Street. Um, I think uh, given the fact that this is B2, and I'll defer to Adam to speak a little bit more about B2 and, and why uh, that was the case. Uh, the commissioners, there was a consensus, and we also have a council member on the commission who wants to speak next, so we'll give him the opportunity to do so. But I would mention that there was some debate and discussion about the housing component on 8th Street. And because of the, the size and the scale of the parcel being almost five acres, uh, there was uh, consistency amongst the members saying that this could be a break from what's developed on A Street in terms of looks and, and aesthetics and appeal. Right now, or had been wooded and had been a home for many, many years, uh, and there was, based on conversation, we haven't seen any site plan design and such, so it's still out there, uh, was the amount of buffer that would be generated from A Street. So I would just mention those two points that the commission did discuss that, uh, at which point, um, Alder Person Rayom, if you'd like to, to speak to your request, and then I may defer back to Adam to talk more about B2. Thank you, Your Honor. Just real quick, and then we can move on. And I, I, th I think it'd be very beneficial, at least, uh, to hear from the developer's standpoint of what uh, is actually there before, you know, get into the uh, maybe nitty-gritty of, uh, of what the outcome would be. Uh, and part of that, I think, is uh, comments to come as you speak, Michael, is, uh, is uh, uh, who's paying for uh, the infrastructure costs and that type of stuff. Um, the traffic volume is there, and I think that I think needs to be more addressed uh, uh, from Dave and, and Adam. And also, I think, Mayor, I think the comment you made is I think the first note that I wrote down here is actually, a, and, and a big thing that went around at the commission meeting that evening was uh, of a, a different look as people came into the, into the city to present something different than just uh, shopping malls, businesses, and whatnot. And here is something, 
And this is not, I think we have to keep in mind, is not just a, uh, a residential development as I think most of us would think about if somebody came and knocked on our door and said about a residential development of a single family or a duplex type of situation going in. And, I, I, and all the details of, uh, for sure, of the, uh, you know, the driveways, the, uh, to make sure every, the entrances, exits, and everything are safe and whatever, uh, all have to be, I guess, totally worked out in the, in the final, uh, final details. But uh, the developers did have uh, a, you know, a, a good set of a proposed of what something could look like if this would go through. Um, but I think uh, another thing, Mayor, that you did mention is that uh, sooner or later for anything to happen, whatever I guess it may be, is basically it's going to have to be annexed into the city. Um, and so where, where we go from there, uh, I hesitated on, uh, um, on our initial vote to uh, hold out these and approve the rest, but I thought I guess maybe we got to go through uh, getting the others out of the way and step into the into the fray here to to see where we uh, uh, where we go with that. I think we had a lot of good discussion at the planning commission meeting that evening. Um, questions were raised. I think there were probably some. I don't know about if it's skeptical or whatever, maybe of what how it initially. Uh, you know, what are we getting or looking at to get into? Um, but I think from through the presentation and questions that were asked, I think, uh, I think anyway, to the commission's satisfaction that uh, uh, there was a good discussion and questions were answered to, to their satisfaction. Um, and I guess also along with in a, you know, if we ever see the 54 bypass, or don't. If we want it, we along with other communities are going to have to step up to the plate and totally demand that it happens. And that if we don't, and we say it's just not going to happen, because that's what I hear, then if that's what we want, then you go down the river to Port Edwards and tell them that the bypass is not going to happen. Because that is part of, that is part of the plan of the bypass. That is part of the bridge, the new bridge being constructed through Port Edwards. So if we want to keep saying it's not going to happen, then it won't. But as somebody, I guess, once did say, and it's to be proactive, not reactive all the time, but also at the time, maybe we got to take a look at something new, and that's where I will back up again and then cut this off here for now, is that this was, a part of that discussion was what this could look like as a new entrance into the city for what people were coming into, promoting ourselves as that. And, and, and again, I think uh, the presentation of what actually the development is to be looked like, and that's why I have to shut up and let them and Adam and them talk about what's going on. Adam, did you want to speak to some generalities about B2 and why you um, allowed for, for approval? And then maybe Dave can address based on Alderperson Rayom's concern about traffic load and maybe just speak just briefly on those two items. And uh, Yeah, um, and this is a problem, I guess, that I see a lot of times when a developer comes forward and tells you an end product, um, especially in a situation like this where the question before the commission was not was the multifamily appropriate on this location that is not the question before the commission the commission had two questions before it number one 
was this annexation appropriate? In other words, is this property appropriate to be in the city versus in the town of Grand Rapids for development? So that's question number one. Number two, the question is, what is the most appropriate zoning for that location? And the question before them from the applicant was, is B2 the best zoning before or for this property in this location? Looking at the comprehensive plan, you have a commercial shown as the appropriate use within your comprehensive plan. The most similar zoning district within your zoning ordinance is the B2 zoning district. So that is why when the commission's looking at it, again, it's, uh, they're looking at the question, is that zoning appropriate in that location? Not um, the actual potential end use, because it is still a potential end use. There's no guarantee that the multifamily would even end up locating there. So all things being considered, all uses being considered, what is the appropriate zoning? And again, going back to your comprehensive plan, B2 is the most similar district to what is shown on your plan. So that is what, I guess, I, I wasn't at the commission meeting, but I'm a lot of what's in the report is from my report. And that is why it was recommended to approval from staff. Because if I was to pick a zoning district that would match, it would be B2. So I, I just want to kind of clarify that and make sure that's very clear. So I guess I was a little upset that you say the commission failed. No, the commission had a clear job before it. And in my opinion, they did that. Um, as far as what's allowed in the B2 district, just a brief overview. I mean, it's a wide range of uses. It's everything you see on A Street, but yes, it does also include multifamily as a permitted use. So if that zoning district is approved there and anywhere else on A Street, someone can pull a permit for multifamily anywhere on A Street as it sits right now. If someone wanted to buy the Brostrom Kicker building, tear it down, they could put up as many multifamily units would fit there. That's a risk you run with the way your zoning ordinance is created. So I just kind of want to get that out there. Um, I'll let Dave talk to traffic because he's probably a little bit more experienced on that than I am. The city had a request a couple of years ago for to look at a traffic signal at, at Whitrock and A Street. At this point, it doesn't meet warrants, but it is in our overall traffic system. Uh, it's on a 40-line street, so the spacing is right between Two Mile and Coon Avenue for a future traffic signal. So um, right now it doesn't warrant it. I don't believe um, this particular development will bring us to that level, but if it does, then we could look at a traffic signal that would fit into our system to handle the traffic. Thank you. Tom, were you asking the developer to, to speak to the requester? I can call on all the person Nash to if he's got questions for the developer as well. No, I, I, I think Adam, because the way I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Adam just explained it, but I mean, the, the original, they, they want to annex. And uh, we've been through this before, you annex, it comes in as uh, R1 or 2, and, and which is one or two family residential district. And once you do that, I mean, then it has to be changed there. You need to have a change there in order to make it so you can make it commercial. Um, and then, yeah, then that's where you run into the problem with you can have whatever. Uh, I, you know, I guess Adam explained it anyway, but I mean, I just wanted to, you know, that's the common way, you know, I mean, there's three steps and, and the, the last step, which is five for the development Who's to say that's actually going to happen? I mean, there's a lot of uh, hoops and stuff to jump through before before that happens. Uh, the the sewer and water isn't even there, so um, I guess I, I don't I don't have a problem with uh, what we're doing here. And I'm glad you pointed out the clarification because yes, and I was going to ask Adam to talk about the process and the grand scheme of things. So it goes from here for the annexation, what Bob just illustrated, but then there's also the site plan, which we haven't seen. Um, we have a proposed use, which I think the developer then it's natural for us to maybe have the developer come up and speak to that. That isn't what's in front of us tonight. That will come back at a subsequent meeting. Adam, can you speak to that process uh, just so everyone's aware of, of what that, that looks like? Um. Well, I guess normally speaking for a B2 district, if someone was proposing something that's commercial or multifamily, uh, being that it's a permitted use, there would not be a site plan review, meaning they could go straight to a building permit. Uh, however, based on this particular property, because of its location near Two Mile Creek and falling under the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance of the county, there is a requirement for them to come back through with a site plan, meaning that 
it would have to go through the plan commission and before the council again for that formal approval of the actual project itself. So that's, again, that separation of what is proposed tonight is a concept and what would come back in the future would be actually what they're looking to build. Okay. Michael, did you want to come in and use the uh, slides? Shane can get those teed up for you. I guess you wanted to demonstrate those. I, I actually have a couple of kind of flash uh, Well, thank you for uh, considering us tonight and uh, taking the, the time to have us on the agenda. Let me see if I can figure out how to get out of the, here we go. Um, okay, so first, uh, I just want to tell everyone a little bit about our company. Uh, I'm sure most are not familiar with us. I don't know if anyone did some research. Um, company's name is Miller Valentine Group. We're based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and we have property that we own and manage in, thir or in 18 states, and we have, we have roughly 13,000 units. Our portfolio is consistently between 94 and 96 percent occupied. We just had to recently um, actually go through that for some asset management reporting, and we were 95.7 right now. Um, we are not in Wisconsin. We're new to Wisconsin. However, we um, kind of surround the state a little bit. We're in Michigan. We're in Iowa. We're in Illinois. Um, obviously, multifamily is a big piece of what we do. We pride ourselves on our ownership. This is our 50th year in business. We own about 200 properties, and I think we've only sold about three in our, our time. So I, I just want to say that as a lot of developers, you know, the question is, are you kind of build and sell and get out? We absolutely would be owning this as a long-term owner. Um, under no situation will we sell it in less than a 15-year time frame, and I can't promise how long, but I know it's at least that long. Um, first thing, I just want to show you a little of the project. This is what the building looks like. It's built to Wisconsin Green Built standards, uh, three-story buildings. There is a clubhouse on site, fitness center, uh, computer room, on-site management, on-site maintenance. Um, the big difference you see here is if you look in the middle of this building, there is an open stairwell. Uh, this was this picture here is from a photo of a, of a property that we built in Tennessee. Uh, obviously, the weather's a lot different, so that would be enclosed. Uh, but other than that, this this is the building that we are proposing here. Um, the investment rough cost that we are estimating currently is uh, eight million dollars. So uh, it's roughly about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per unit is the total cost. Um, and then I'll I'll try to well let me get to the site plan here. Um, I'm sorry. Here is a, our current concept site plan. Obviously, that's not final, and uh, we need to come back and get input and review it. And particularly, we're looking into some of the concerns. Um, shoreland zoning may make us switch a little bit. Um, if you look to the uh, kind of, I guess that's northwest corner, the top left corner of the screen there, um, you'll see that's kind of where the the uh, watershed comes through, and you can see the green kind of underneath our, our site layout there. So we need to make sure with shoreland zoning that we are far enough away from that. And it's something that we're aware of and uh, taken into consideration. Uh, one of the comments made was uh, regarding uh, sewer laterals, uh, sidewalks, and the like. That's all things that would be part of our plan and things that we will pay to construct. So that won't be a cost for the city at all. We, we would pull fire hydrants and everything else, anything that's required would be on us to construct. Um, I want to speak a little bit about the zoning specifically. Um, obviously, annexation is sort of a, a must for development here just because of the uh, sewer and water issue. Uh, regarding zoning, specifically, we're looking at B2, as was discussed here, because we do think it's the right zoning for the area. And should our project fall through, which can happen, I mean, that absolutely does happen sometimes, um, that's the zone I would expect the city would want to see, assuming you would annex it in. That's the most natural zone, and, and that's from discussions with Adam and also just kind of looking at land use there. Um, our project is based on uh, WIDA tax credits. The timing of all that puts us into a competitive situation for funding, um, which we'll know probably in May if it's going to go forward. If we start construction, you would see construction starting around this time next year. It would sort of be a race to beat the weather if it gets too cold. It, adds a lot of cost. If not, it could push to the spring, but the, the goal would be to start in October or November of next year. Um, it is roughly one year construction time period. Uh, we serve as the general contractor, but we hire all subcontractors locally. 
the estimate is that it creates roughly 75 jobs during the construction period. Um, again, we will advertise locally as long as the, the trades are available and willing to work here, we will hire them all locally here. We do not bring them with us. Um, traffic, uh, one thing I would like to say about traffic, and it's not that I have all the traffic studies for 8th Street, but um, I will say that I don't believe a multifamily property of this level of density, this, this many units, would necessarily create more traffic than a majority of commercial establishments. Now, it depends on the commercial establishment, obviously, but things like restaurants and or storefronts would likely create a lot more traffic um, than this would. The other thing to consider is um, multifamily serves as a good buffer. If you think about the single family homes to the back it, behind it, um, you know, if you have a lot of commercial activity, there's a lot more kind of in and out and um, deliveries come in and it, it's, it's just, it serves kind of naturally from a land planning basis as kind of a buffer to the neighborhood be, behind it from what could potentially go there. Obviously not as compared to empty land and, and you know, forest there now and, and the like. Um, and the other thing is when you're considering future development along the corridor, multifamily and having 56 units in that area spurs future development. Uh, there's residents right in the area that now all of a sudden are going to be eating at establishments. They're maybe working at places right there, you know, doing their grocery shopping and the like. So business and retail generally follows rooftops is kind of what we like to say. So a lot of our properties actually are on main corridors or just off of main corridors. And, and we find that to be um, pretty helpful. The other thing I'd like to say is kind of how we found um, Wisconsin Rapids. We, we, uh, started with a statewide uh, market study of the state of Wisconsin and places that may make sense. Um, our history has been to be in some of the more medium-sized towns. We don't necessarily go into the Milwaukee's of the world. So that was kind of a, a first filter for us. But then we start looking and this came up as a place that um, quite honestly we see a need. Uh, a couple of things I want to point out that came back from what we studied. 65% of all rental housing in the city was built before 1980 and only 8% of it has been built since 2000. So there's a pretty strong aging stock of rental housing here and a lot of residents may not have the option for kind of state of the art, new, newly constructed modern amenity apartments in town and, and we think this could serve a need that's currently missing. Um, I don't know that I covered everything but try not to take all the time and hopefully that gives you a good overview of who we are and, and kind of the project that we are proposing here and I'm obviously any questions happy to answer all the person stack uh, thank you your honor what's the demographic you're looking at and what is the uh, uh, what type one two bedroom three bedroom uh, condo working families is our target uh, we um, will rent based on the tax credits where we are sourcing we will be able to rent um, to people who make up to forty two thousand one hundred and twenty dollars and there is a cutoff based on that. Um, currently, it's designed as 50% three-bedroom, 50% two-bedroom. It may change, uh, but if it changes, you're going to 60-40 or something that's going to be in that ballpark. Uh, it may change based on final site design as we look at building footprints and the like with Shoreland zoning. Our uh, two-bedroom, and this was asked at Planning Commission, so I apologize I didn't point this out earlier, but our two-bedroom units are 908 square feet. Our three bedroom units are 1,022 square feet. And rental rates? Uh, rental rates, uh, we are allowed to rent up to $817 for a two bedroom, $944 for a three bedroom. Obviously market determines it, but, but that's the most we're allowed to charge. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All the person, is there any other questions? All the person, whole camp. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Before you were talking about the bypass, thinking it was going to be 10, 15 years from now, they're still working on that down at the state. Maybe if the city was more involved in the bypass, we could get a little bit more help from this, you know, the county needs the city's help too for that bypass. So we shouldn't give up on it. We've been still working on that bypass. And I don't think it's that far down the road. Thank you. All the persons, any other discussion? All the person Nash? Yeah, just, just a comment to kind of uh, thank you for the presentation. And, uh, you know, this is a, a project, a development 
project that's in, in item number five, and we held out three, four, and five, and just, you know, we're going to have to vote on these separately, I believe. Right. right. The zoning is probably to the annexation first. And then the right. And then, then we would go to five, which before. Actually, three and four are just the public hearing and then the recommendation. 8A and 8B is actually would be the annexation ordinance. Okay, well, so I'm I would suggest go 8A, 8B, and then okay. 5. Well, I'm looking at the minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, I understand now. So, all right. Yeah, well, we're, we're talking about the report, though. So, right. so we don't have to do anything with the report. We're just talking about the report. You have to uh, take action on the zoning recommendation from the report. However, that the annexation should happen first, so you... I would recommend that you jump down to the annexation, which is an 8A and 8B, right. and then go back to item 5 in planning. Okay, um, okay, 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 I got you now. Yeah, okay. That was all? Well, I want to do that, but he wants to say something. Well, no, I, I, would, I would just uh, make, an, make a motion to approve. We what we do have, uh, Shane's got, is a motion to approve uh, 3, 4, and 5 as presented. Motion by Raylam, seconded by yourself, um, to approve 3, 4, and 5 as presented. However, at the attorney's Fine. request, we would, so maybe rescinding oh, that motion know. might make sense, and then we can act on, on a motion you may want to make. Because we're just, that, that's just pertaining with the minutes, and we actually have an agenda item to agenda Subsequently, that we need yeah. to deal with. Mm -hmm. so. Correct. So if Tom rescinds his motion and we can move along, right? Right. All right. And I'll rescind the second. All right. Motion and the second have been rescinded. Uh, the floor is yours. So I can move along. Yes. So uh, I would make a motion to approve item 8A at this time and B. Okay. A and B at this time on our council agenda. Yeah, so we have a um, motion. We'll wait for a second. Then I'll have the attorney pipe in. Uh, is there a second on the motion to approve items 8 and B? I'm going to push your button, Scott, please, for Shane's records up here. Thank you. All right. Attorney Shield. Okay, because this is a direct annexation, it requires a two-thirds vote of the membership. And so that, that means no matter how many people are here, we have an absent member, uh, we would, you need six votes to annex the property. Just wanted everyone to be clear on that. Just to annex. Right. Correct. Any further to Alderperson Kirkpatrick? Just a, just a question as, uh, as the presentation was, uh, was gone through. Um, and this kind of, from what you had said, Adam, so anything that would, you know, let's just say that this thing goes through, annexation occurs, any project has to come back for approval. So no project can go forward, no, no earth can be turned without an approval from the commission and the council. Is that correct? Yeah, and that is tied to the floodplain, or not floodplain, sorry, the shoreland zoning ordinance okay. of the county that has jurisdiction because of its location. Because of the creek. But again, Somewhere else on A Street that would be zone B2 would not right. normally have to do that. Right. Okay. Um, so, and what I heard, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, was that your development group, this is this is what you guys do, is multifamily residential units, and that you do not sell your properties. So, if annexation goes through, and the proposal plans in time, you know, six months or whatever, if those would not go through, what, what, is, what do you guys do and what does that leave us? What position does that put us in? Um, Please, I don't know if the question makes, I mean, it, I'll let I you know, well, I can, it. they don't own it, but. That's, what I was gonna, that's all I was gonna say, we, we don't own the property. Um, so our purchase of the property is tied to our funding the proposal. So if, the, if any project plans would not go through or go to fruition, then you guys are, are out entirely? We w Correct. We do not own the property. We, we purchased the property 
essentially upon construction start, but are we, we with 99% accuracy know that we have funding and we're moving forward in May. And, and then the construction started six months later. During that six months is when we're getting final site plan approval, uh, engineering drawings, all the like meeting with fire marshal, et cetera. Okay. And if those, does that, does all of that stuff there, the, the site plans and stuff like that, does that come back here before it's finalized or by the time that they're already going into that, that stage of the development, is it already passed council and it's not? It would come back bef to council before that May date where he's saying you would have 99% sure that you've got funding and you're moving forward. So that would be prior to that. Assuming, that, let's say you approve the annexation and the zoning tonight, uh, for whatever reason funding falls through or a site plan doesn't get approved, then basically what the city is left with is property that is annexed into the city and is zoned B2 and is ready for development is basically what would be left. Okay. I think that was your original question of yeah, what happens if basically yeah. if they walk over. Yeah, yeah, yeah essentially have, yes. Yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and it's I you know, and I guess ownership. personally I'm I'm fine with the idea of, of the annexation. I'm fine with the idea of the of the zoning. It's just you know, we've what's presented to me here tonight is that the the zoning and, and that nature, and then essentially a proposal for a residential structure. That's what I'm. That's what I'm viewing, and that's the way that I'm voting is reading, reading all of that information compiled together. So that's that's where my vote will come from tonight. We're, old person Nash. Well, worst case scenario, we end up with property that's annexed into the city and it's ready for commercial development. That's it's exactly whether, right. Whether this is approved or not, it's it's something commercial can come in, whether it's a hotel. That's exactly whatever. right. Mm -hmm. You're correct. Any further discussion, older persons? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. The motion is to approve item 8 and B, 8A and B. Please cast your ballots. Mr. Worrell? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Shane's going to have to. Shane can see it. I'm sorry. See it. I'm like, what's going on? There you go. He wants to see it. There we go. <laughs> he can see it now. All right. Motion defeated five A's and two nays. Okay. Uh, we'll move into, uh, as a reminder, at the city's uh, city attorney's uh, note that uh, we will require six of the members uh, to vote in favor, not of those presents, present here, two-thirds. Um, so we move back to item seven um, on the report, which is seven... Uh, through, um, let's see, item seven, and uh, I guess three, four, and five. Three, four, and five which, uh, since the annexation was denied, um, we would not. Uh, right. I mean, what action would be? Right. We can't rezone property. Right. That's so I mean, not so in there's the no standard. action on that. Right. So all right. So we do. We have to. We've already approved the planning commission the balance of the report. So no further action. All right. We're set. Thank you. Item nine under new business. Item A is the appointment of two citizen members members and one city member employee member to the ethics board. Your Honor. Yes, sir. Just to, uh, I, maybe an explanation to clarify to the people in the audience here of where we are, of what uh, what just took place. And we didn't do anything. I know, but just so they're okay. So they're, I, I understand, Bob. Just so they're all clear. Mm -hmm. So the annexation to the city was denied, and so therefore, uh, no subsequent development can occur uh, without a re-annexation request, a, sec a second request uh, to the Planning Commission and to uh, the subsequent, uh, so to the Council subsequently, correct? Well, I think farther than that, you have a developer here that was sitting here and made a presentation. You just told him to hit the road, Jack. Mm -hmm. you know? I think that pretty much spells it out. Okay. Uh, is that, Tom, did you have any other comments? Okay. All the person stack. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, one thing, too, that I see taking place tonight is we're putting a stick in somebody's eye who wants to do something for the city. Thank you. All right. Uh, any further comments? Uh, Alder President Kirkpatrick, last one, then we got to move on. Thank you. I, I don't personally feel like my vote came out of 
sticking sticking it to somebody or telling somebody no hit the road i feel it was for me it was this is not the right place for what i had presented to me so annexation in general commercial terms fine this you know the the proposed development project as was presented in here fine it's just to me those two items are mutually exclusive events Item 9, under new business, item A, the appointment of two citizen members and one city employee member to the Ethics Board. Council members, uh, we've got, um, let's see, we've got an attachment, doesn't say attachment number. I guess we've got two letters of interest. One second here. We've got... Two employee and two citizen letters. So we've got, of the two employee, we've got... Two, which uh, two slots, and um, one city. The way I'm reading that, is that correct, Mr. Clerk? We have one, one, so we have one opening for city employee, and we have one opening for city. They need to choose one. Okay. So one of each pile. For, upon further clarification. Do we have uh, members that um, presented um, here that uh, would like to come and address the body? Anybody? Nick is back there. I see Nick behind the podium. Nick, would you like to come forward? Come on, one second. Yes, I was on. Uh, I won't take a whole lot of your time. I thank you for your consideration for my service on uh, the Ethics Board uh, here with the City of Wisconsin Rapids uh, as an employee member. Um, I think a lot of what the Ethics Board values um, uh, aligns with what my personal and professional beliefs are. Um, personal beliefs aside, uh, I do have professional uh, background in uh, ethics, uh, both from my business uh, background uh, in corporate ethics and the business ethics, uh, but also uh, with my law background. I am a, an attorney in good standing uh, here in Wisconsin, and uh, uh, in being so, I have to uphold the rules of professional responsibility. So I think uh, those uh, all align with what the Ethics Board looks to uh, uphold. So I won't take a whole lot of your time, but thank you for your consideration. Um, and then the second member uh, or second individual that's wishing to um, seek the position is Mr. Eric Davin, um, and his letter is also attached. Letter and cover letter and resume, it looks like, for both of those individuals. And then uh, anybody from the uh, citizens? Nope, Shane is not seeing. If anybody's back there, please raise your hand, Mr. Mr. Teaslink or Mr. Zappin. It looks like. Council members, what are your wishes? Oh. Robert, Robert, do you want to come forward? Thank you. Introduce yourself, please. Hard to see sometimes even with young eyes it's hard to see back there go ahead <clears throat> excuse me uh, my name is Robert T Slink and um, I've worked in uh, Renaissance learning for 15 years and um, I um, have been looking for a way to um, get more involved with my community and this one looked like a very interesting um, area that I've always been interested in. I graduated with a minor in ethics from the University of Northern Iowa so this is something that uh, has always interested me and as, as long as well as the uh, city politics side of it Thank you. Any questions from council members? Well, thank you for your interest and for being here tonight, most importantly. Council members, what are your wishes regarding uh, item 9A? We've got uh, one, of each, uh, one of each pile or packet to select from. All the person here, Patrick. Thank you. Um, I just want to make it known here. Jean obviously couldn't be here tonight, but she had expressed an interest in uh, nomination for Ed Zappin. Um, on the same token, I'd like to make a nomination for all four of the letters of interest here this evening. There's a motion to nominate all four for consideration. Is there a second? Or do we, have, we don't have to second that, right? Just nominations. Thank you. Okay. They've all been nominated. What are your wishes, council members? Okay, we'll take the uh, citizen member first. He didn't bring, uh, Shane didn't bring some. 
we've got two, and and Shane said we need one of each. Shane, that's the way I read it too. That we need two. Shane, is that not correct? The way the agenda has been noticed for two, for two and for one. So uh, you've got on your cover, Shane. It says for okay, okay. So all right, both of the individuals have been nominated. So uh, in which case, we'll entertain a, a vote. All in favor of approving the two members who wish, or two individuals who wish to be considered to be on the city's ethic board. I'll signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? All right. They've been approved. Shane, do you have uh, any pieces of paper or anything for us for the um, employee member? All right, I've got business cards. You could use the back of those too. The chief's got some stuff here. All right. Oh, they've got flowers on them? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so the first name of the individual and district, if you can, for the employee uh, member to the ethics board. Nick, Nick and Eric. Uh, all ballots have been casted, and we have four votes for Eric Dobbin and three votes for Nick Flanagan. Okay. Nick, thanks for your interest. Next item on the agenda is item B, the appointments to the city's election board. See attachment number three, item B. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Seeing none, moving to a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? That passes. Uh, next agenda item is item 10, Standing Council Committee Reports, item A, Finance and Property, held December 3rd. Thank you. Finance and Property met December 3rd. One report here this evening. We met at 5 p.m. Tuesday, December 3rd, first floor conference room. All members are present. A list of those attending is on file with the clerk. Item number one, meeting was called to order. Item number two, there was no special beer applications. Item three was an application for a Class A liquor and beer license filed by Merlin Jeffrey of DBA Quality Foods IGA for the premises located at 1021 West Grand Avenue. A motion and a second to approve that request, license and premise, and that motion carried. Item number four, renewal for applications for A, a secondhand article dealer license filed by Eco ATM Incorporated, 555 West Grand Avenue. It was moved and seconded to approve the license. That motion carried. Item B, a pawnbroker, secondhand article dealer, and secondhand jewelry dealer license filed by Eway Sales LLC, 3511 8th Street South. Moved and seconded to approve the license. That motion carried. Item 5, a special events application filed by the Southwood County Humane Society for their Super Snow Sculpture Spectacular on January 25th from 8 a.m. to 8 to 6 p.m. to include vending and use of the parking lot and grounds of the Centralia Center and the Riverwalk. It is moved and seconded to approve the application, including the vending and use of the parking lots and grounds of the Centralia Center and the Riverwalk. Item 6 was a request from Jim Borski to review quotes for two one-and-a-half-ton pickup trucks for the DPW. It was moved and seconded to accept Rapids Ford as the low bidder, the qualified low bidder, with trade-ins for the amount forty-three thousand dollars or forty-three thousand seventy dollars. That motion carried. See attachment one. Item number seven was a request from Fire Chief Dave Kirkman for permission to apply for a 2013 Assistance to Firefighter grant through FEMA. 
It is moved and seconded to approve applying for that grant and that motion carried. And uh, I wish he could have stuck around a little bit longer, but I believe that uh, Tim can answer any questions there as well. Item number eight, a request from the Municipal Court Judge Peter Kassenholtz that Municipal Court fees be adjusted to reflect any increases as may be allowed by state law. It is moved and seconded to approve increasing the Municipal Court fees to be increased by $10 and that motion carried. Um, just real fast, that was a little bit different than what was presented to the committee, but we felt that it was fine to continue to review these as they came forward and since it happened about every 10 years. Item number nine was a request for $20,715.60 20, from the City of Wisconsin Rapids to help support the Regional Econo <coughs> Economic Growth Initiative, also known as REGI. That's attachment number two in your packets. It was moved and seconded to approve that request for $20,715.60 for the Reggie initiative and that motion carried. Item number 10, beverage operator license applications A. It was moved and seconded to approve new license for the individual listed motion carried. Item B, it was moved and seconded to renew the license for the individual listed that motion carried. Item C, there were no applications recommended denied by the police department. Item 11 was the audit of the bills. It was moved and seconded to approve payment for vouchers numbering 53065 through number 53381, and that motion carried. Item number 12, it was moved and seconded to adjourn. Our meeting adjourned at 6.05 p.m. Andrew Kirkpatrick, Secretary. With that, I move for adoption of these minutes as presented. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve. Alder Person Nash. Thank you. Um, just on item number three, is that just a, a change in the license description or as they where they lapsed in their yeah actually um, it was the business was sold or actually yeah the business was sold and it, it's not actually in his name it's going to be the same entity with new officers um, that was kind of clarified after the meeting so it's a, a new owner of the business okay further discussion all the person Kirkpatrick thank you um, real quick if Tim, if you could talk a little bit about item number seven, and that was the request for that firefighter grant. Um, unfortunately, there's not an attachment here, but uh, city contribution and what that was going to be used for, if you've got that information in front of you. Um, yeah, the, the fire department has applied for these capital grants in the past, and what it is is they apply to FEMA for, for equipment. I think some of the past things that they've gotten through this grant process is uh, they got a turn out gear dryer, they installed an exhaust system in the, on the garage of the fire department through this grant and basically it's a 95 through FEMA and our 5% city match. I'm not sure exactly what, I can't remember offhand what I exactly believe it's, what you it, called it S, was SBA or SCA? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, yes, basically correct. I believe it's your uh, respiration yep. equipment. Yeah. And that, which was on, a, he said an 18 year depreciation fund and would have earned yeah, they have a replacement yep. schedule for these that they have to replace. Or not 18 every so years, often. but it would have been 2018 before these would yep. have been scheduled to be right. replaced. So we're kind of getting, if we'd be approved for this, we'd be getting ahead of that curve a little bit at a very good rate for the city. Further discussion? We've got um, all the person stack. Go ahead. Uh, just hold out nine for a separate vote, please. Thank you. Uh, item nine has been held out. Any other discussion? So it would be the balance of the report with the exception of item nine, which is a request. Um, to support the Reggie initiative. All right. Uh, seeing no further discussion, please cast your ballots. Motion carried. Seven A's and zero nays. So item nine is a request for $20,715.60 from the city of Wisconsin Rapids to help the regional economic to support the Regional Economic Growth Initiative. Uh, we've got members from Reggie that are here this evening. If you'd like to come to the podium uh, and introduce yourselves, if you'd like to, or if you'd like to speak to the request, otherwise make yourself available uh, to council members if council members have specific questions uh, for them. Council members, any discussion? All the person stack. This button. Um, how many communities are going in on this funding and what is your uh, what is your pay plan? 
benefits going forward? How, how would you meet the expense of someone like this? Uh, who are you looking for to be that initial person? Um, you know, uh, go ahead, please. I want to make sure the mic is pushed, uh, the green lights on the mic base. Is it on now? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stack, thank you for your questions. The first one was, I'm sorry, I was coming up to the front. Uh, how are you going to, uh, who, are, who are you looking to hire? Okay. Uh, um, you're, you'll have so many dollars from how many groups? <laughs> Yeah, the, the municipalities that have contributed thus far have been the Wood County Board for $30,500, uh, uh, Grand Rapids is about $7,900 in their contribution, um, Nakusa is about $1,900 in their contribution, and Port Edwards is about $2,100 in their contribution, and Pittsville is participating as well. They participated, and uh, their cost is $250, and it's based on equalized value. And that was determined by a group of subcommittee members of Reggie that made a determination, Adam, Jason, uh, Tim DeSource, he had some input on it as well, and that's how those dollars were, were factored in. Uh, we're asking for the fair share, if you will, for the city uh, to participate in this. Now, in terms of your other questions that you had, uh, Reggie has been working for uh, a little over two years uh, to put this plan together. Uh, the questions that you are asking is we have about a six month timeline now where we would like to get started and do a re recruiting search on finding someone who has the skill sets necessary uh, for this position. Uh, right now, Encourage Community Foundation, which has obviously, uh, and I don't want to uh, bore you with all the facts associated with what we talked about on the first uh, time we presented, but um, Encourage has a $200,000 match grant on this for right now, and that doesn't include the monies that we've put in to the study uh, to get us to this point through future works. So um, Encourage is the, going to be the employee of record until we can uh, restructure Reggie and then that person who we hire will be answering to uh, the committee structure as we've redesigned it. And that person will be reporting and there'll be connections obviously to all the municipalities uh, up and down Southwood County as well. Uh, we still have presentations to make uh, with Rome and uh, several other of the local municipalities to find out uh, what their status is, but obviously uh, we believe this is a regional approach and we also believe that uh, we intentionally came to Wisconsin Rapids after we uh, had some inertia and some positive momentum uh, with the other municipalities that we've been working with. All right, and okay, so you have a, you have a foundation, you have a, a support, $200,000 mm -hmm. you said, Mm -hmm. Where do you receive revenue to pay for this after a certain time or to meet, you know, the person will, would look for benefits, uh, so on and so forth. Um, do you keep coming back to the communities? Is that what you're, you're anticipating? Well, we you seem to have, you seem to have a position and you're <coughs> asking the communities at this time to, uh, for, Mm -hmm. provide a, f a portion of the funding. Mm -hmm. For example, what you gave me right now adds up to about $62,000. Mm -hmm. And um, we have strategies in place in which we're talking about right now in which we are going to make a community-wide approach, including businesses and other uh, areas of our community for donations to support this. Uh, again, this is a regional approach that's going to involve our entire community if we're going to turn around economic development. It's going to be the regional approach that's going to make it. And, and this plan uh, in communities where it's been done uh, has found that there has been a flip really in the support systems for it because you've got a regional approach to it and 
people are supporting it because they see the benefits of it. But it's an entirely different way of looking at economic development. Future Works Plan, as I mentioned to you last time we talked about, uh, is unique in the sense that we've spent two and a half years talking about what it is that we can do to turn uh, our economy in the right direction. And it's talking about providing leverage on our assets and working together and coming together around these assets of which manufacturing and food processing is a part of it. And so that's what we hope is going to ignite uh, some economic development and we're going to hopefully be able to produce some examples of that over the next several months. But we need to get started on this. Is the $20,000 needed at this time to go forward with your uh, yes. recru recruitment? Yeah, and I think it is. I, I think it's very important because I think we need to demonstrate a regional, collaborative, collective approach to this. And when we have communities like Pittsville uh, understanding it and Nakusa understanding it, working together, I think we need to step forward and be unified in Southwood County because that is what's going to get it done. We know that if we don't work together, it's going to be very, very difficult, if, if not impossible. The regional approach also makes us more connected to the region in general and hopefully through the state as well as the Midwest. We have a site plan here that was just approved several uh, weeks ago that, that we are one of 13 uh, communities that's positioned. We need an economic developer to rally our assets together and work together and represent Southwood County, not just Wisconsin Rapids. This isn't something that could be done first on your own and then you come back and show us the fruits of your labor? No, because that, I because I really think that I really think our community needs to have our leaders step up and be working together with us through economic development. Economic development is not just on your shoulders; it's on everybody's shoulders. We've got an encourage community foundation and other businesses that we're going to hopefully get together with, and this is going to be a unified front. And I think it's really critical that the city plays. Thank you. And I would add, too, as a member of Reggie, um, all the person stack and other council members, too, I think this is really, truly an opportunity for us to think differently about how we approach economic development. Historically, through the room tax allocation, we um, provided to the Chamber of Commerce um, a significant amount of funds, uh, about twice the amount, about $70,000 annually to support economic development efforts. So this is about half of what we historically contributed for economic development through room tax allocation. Prior to that change, and that was actually prior to your coming on the council again most recently, um, was uh, for us to think differently. And the Reggie Initiative, as a member of Reggie, it's something that um, I think as a municipal leader, that us as municipal leaders as well as electeds, have the opportunity to tell the greater Wisconsin Rapids area and the Southwood, Southern Wood County area that this is an opportunity for us to partner with our regional municipals. Frankly, most of the activity would happen in the city, right? I mean, we saw a development potential and opportunity that unfortunately didn't get passed but would have only happened because they had to be in the city. And so, frankly, most of the development, there's, a few, there's only a few alternatives where that development could happen. So this is truly an opportunity for us to further our work. You know, Gus alluded to the uh, certified sites designation. It really allows us to, to further our work to get that site noticed, but also to uh, develop further um, sectors of our economy beyond manufacturing and, and others. But Gus, do you want to add to that? Mayor Verwick and the council, I'd like to just uh, have Jeff Burton say a couple of words as well. Uh, as I mentioned to you, Reggie has been working for almost two and a half years now, and there are 18 people on it. Uh, Jeff Burton is the CEO for ERCO, and he's been a very, very integral part, along with Melissa uh, Loken from the chamber, as well as Jennifer Rickenbach and Kelly Lucas in the, in the audiences, and uh, Rick Merton. So uh, Jeff has got some insights as well that might be helpful in clarifying some of the uh, questions. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, as Gus said, we've been working on this for about two and a half years. Uh, and speaking to the, uh, the survey that was done, the Future Work survey, um, we did put skin in the game. We already spent money uh, as the funders group through the Encourage Community Foundation to do the survey. And now we want to act on the activities that we see are required from the survey. Um, 
as the mayor said, you know, the, the bulk of what happens in Southwood County, if it's not gonna land here in Wisconsin Rapids, it's, it's going to have a positive impact on Wisconsin Rapids uh, through the businesses done. It's not unlike the company that I work for that, that uh, you know, resides in, in Port Edwards, yet Wisconsin Rapids, I think, uh, shares a lot of the, uh, the expenses that our company spends. Um, the, the, the point that I want to make is, is that we are, we are also on an annual basis going out and asking for business to put skin in the game. So the, the chamber is going out for $10,000 from our, our uh, small business members to be able to support this. And the remaining $65,000, we would look to businesses like ERCO and other large companies in the area or companies that have um, uh, foundations uh, that support the area, like the large, you know, the utilities that are in the area. So um, I, I strongly encourage you to take part in this because it is a part of our long-term future. And to be clear, yes, we will come back and we will ask you to support us again next year. This is a long-term uh, scenario that we all have to be part of because it has to be sustained. So if there's no other questions, I will turn it back over. Uh, what's been the re response from the small business area? Uh, who have you contacted? Who, have, uh, who would be representative of that small business that you've contacted that say, yes, I'd like to continue with this? Well, we, the Chamber, I am, I'm also the Secretary on the Chamber of Commerce locally, and we, the Chamber, have had that discussion at our most recent meeting, and we will be rolling it out at our annual meeting in January to be able to approach all of our members at that point in time. At so this, this, this ask is happening on all fronts. We're spreading this out, and we're going to large business at the same time, and that will likely happen uh, January and February of 14. So you haven't spoken with any of the small businesses if they're on or not? Uh, no, we haven't, sir. Okay. Thank you. Please. Mm -hmm. Currently, the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce solicits economic development funding from our members. Our members contribute somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to $8,000 per year for economic development. In the past, we've directed those dollars towards marketing, towards business retention and expansion, business startup, things of that nature. We, along me, along with my board, have made the commitment this year that those dollars will be allocated to Reggie. And we are going to look beyond our membership to of small businesses to support the efforts of Reggie with our goal in mind of being $10,000. Um, one of the questions, too, that I'd just like to address that came up at, at one of the last meetings was duplication of services. Doesn't the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce do this or do that or whatever the case may be? As the mayor alluded to, we did receive quite a bit of funding in past years to do a lot more in the area of economic development. We've had to narrow down and really focus on what we're good at at the Chamber of Commerce, and that's connecting businesses to businesses that result in sales. So sales of our members that participate in our leads group have been well over a half million dollars this year. We're also very strong in business retention and expansion in leading those efforts. We championed an effort to get further training for our members of our team to be able to start to develop an economic gardening program. And we're also very good at small business startup. This position that we're looking to recruit really coordinates economic development in the community. It serves as outreach and connections beyond what we have locally and can provide impact far greater for all of the players that work together. If we're, if we're all coordinated under some person that has the skills, charisma, um, we're really, we're looking for some, someone that hasn't been seen before. We're not looking for a traditional economic developer and we're not looking in the traditional places. So this is a whole new opportunity for the greater Wisconsin Rapids area and all of our partners involved in Reggie. And I encourage you all to support it wholeheartedly. Um, all of the partners in this are very much vested in the success of this effort. And you won't see a more dedicated group of people to economic development than the people of Reggie. Thank you. Alder Person Stack, did you have uh, further questions? Uh, just a comment. I think I'll have to reserve my, my vote this year. 
see what they show at uh, next year's. Thank you. Further further discussion, council members. Did you want to speak? Please Just move for adoption of item number nine as presented. We have a motion. Is there a second? Uh, Chad, do you want to push your button, please, for Shane? Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. Please cast your ballots. Motion carried. Six A's and one nay. Thank you, members of Reggie, for being here this evening and for your uh, time to present to the council. On behalf of Reggie, thank you very much for your support. Appreciate that. Uh, moving to the next item on our agenda, <coughs> item 10B, uh, the Public Works Committee meeting held December 3rd. All the person room. Thank you, Your Honor. Public Works Committee met at 6.09 p.m. on Tuesday, December 3rd. 2013 in the first floor conference room in City Hall. All members were present. Also attending were Dave Laspa and Joe Eichstead. A list of others present is on file in the clerk's office. Anyway. Item one was to call the meeting to order. Item two, a request from Ahmed Musalam 7620, Warren Drive, representing, representing Rapids Area Soccer, to waive both the $250 erosion control permit fee and the $50 excavating fee for the new soccer fields by the Washington School that they are developing. Ahmed represented uh, Rapids Area Soccer was present for this item. There was a motion and a second to waive the fees and the motion carried. Item three was a request from Steve Clavine, 4311 White Pine Circle to vacate Clavine Avenue between 14th Place South and 15th Place South. Steve was present for the item. He is proposing to change Clavine Avenue between 14th Place South and 15th Place South to a cul-de-sac west of 15th Place. There was a motion a second to recommend the vacation of Clavine Avenue between 14th Place South and 15th Place South and adopt the resolution. The motion carried and that resolution is contained in our packet of minutes. Item four was a request from Dave Ramsden of Ramsden Construction, 6640 State Highway 13 South to change the maximum driveway widths allowed for duplexes from 36 feet to 40 feet. There was no one present for the item. There was a motion a second to recommend revising the maximum driveway widths allowed for duplexes from 36 to 40 feet only if both driveways into the duplex are adjacent to each other on the same street. The motion carried, and the, that an, uh, uh, ordinance is attached. Item five was a request from all the person Kellogg to patch the alley between Mead Street, Third Street South, Elm Street, and Sherman Street, and remove the tree adjacent to the alley to maintain the alley until it can be reconstructed. There was a motion a second to remove the tree and to patch the alley, and that motion carried. Item six was to review the proposed 2014 Public Works schedule. The committee reviewed the schedule. Item seven was to review the referral list. Uh, the committee removed item 9B, 14, and 15 of 2013 from their list. Item eight, uh, there was motion and a second uh, to adjourn. Uh, meeting adjourned. And with uh, the meeting adjourned at 6.47 p.m., with that, Your Honor, I'd move for adoption of the committee report. We have a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. Please cast your ballots. Motion carried. Seven A's and zero nays. Final item underneath item 10, item C, Human Resources Committee <laughs> Mel, uh, meeting held December 9th and December 10th. Alder Person Nash. Human Resources Committee met at 4 p.m. on Monday, December 9th, 2013. All members were present. Item 1, the meeting was called to order at 4 p.m. Item 2, A, a motion and a second to go into closed session. Motion passed unanimously. B, in closed session, the committee discussed compensation for a union police sergeant promoted to a non-union police lieutenant. Item C, or C in 
Under item number two is a motion and a second to return to open session. Motion passed unanimously. There was a motion and a second to place the promoted employee in a pay progression to grade 13, step nine, and to place future promotions to police lieutenant in the pay progression of grade 13, step nine. This is the same grade and step as all current police lieutenants. And motion carried. Item three, motion and a second to go into closed session again. Motion passed unanimously. Uh, in closed session, the committee discussed bargaining strategy. The committee continued in closed session and conducted base wage negotiations with the ASME group. Uh, there was a motion and a second to return to open session. The motion passed and no action was taken. Item four, the committee considered a request to change a portion of the HR assistance 2013 compensation to the health plan due to a significant amount of work being dedicated to the health plan administration and related health plan design changes. Motion and a second to approve allocating 155.5 hours of the Human Resources Assistance Compensation to the Health Plan Fund for the year 2013. That motion carried. Item number five, uh, there is a motion and a second to approve the proposed 2014 Health and Wellness Operating Plan. The motion carried. That's attachment number one of these minutes. And the Item number six, the meeting adjourned at 5.36 p.m. We also had another report. Uh, Human Resources Committee met at 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, December 10th. All members were present except for Alder Person Whirl, who was excused. Uh, item one, the meeting was called to order at 4.31 p.m. Item two, uh, discuss and approve new job classifications and wage rates for DP up, B, DTW employees. Motion was made and seconded to approve the request. And motion passed. It's attachment number one of these minutes. Item number three, uh, a motion was made and seconded to go into closed session. A roll call vote was taken. Motion passed unanimously. In closed session, the committee discussed bargaining strategy. Uh, in closed session, the uh, committee will, or conducted base wage negotiations with ASME and asset groups. The committee met with representatives of ASME and asset groups to conduct base wage negotiations. Uh, D, a motion was made and seconded to return to open session, and a motion passed. Uh, item number four, discuss and approve tentative labor agreements with ASPE and Asset. A motion was made and seconded to approve tentative labor agreements with ASPE and Asset. Motion passed. That's attachments two, three, and four. Item number five, discuss and approve an employee recognition, uh, recognition increase for asset and clerical employees. Motion was made and seconded to approve a recognition rate increase in the amount of 0.34% of wages for all AFSCME clerical and asset employees and approve a lump sum award to the employees in the following AFSCME positions. Grade operator in the amount of $551.62. Street marking and meter maintenance in the amount of $594.05. And the current single axle truck driver driver in the park department, the amount of $275.81, and that motion passed. Item six, discuss and approve a wage increase for non-union employees. Motion was made and seconded to approve a 2% increase for all non-union employees, and that motion passed. The meeting adjourned at 4.47 p.m., and I'll move for approval of both reports. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, if we could get your button, please. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the two reports? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Motion carried. Seven A's and zero nays. Item 11, under miscellaneous reports, item A is the Housing Authority held October 30th. Uh, McMill Memorial Library Board of Trustees held October 16th and November 20th. Item C, the Police and Fire Commission uh, held November 6th, December 3rd, and uh, December 4th. Item D, the Wastewater Treatment Commission held December 4th. Item E, the Wisconsin Rapids Fire Department monthly organizational summary for November. Item F, the Wisconsin Rapids Police Department's monthly report for November. Item G, the Waterworks and Lighting Commission meeting held November 13th, their regular meeting, and November 13th, their special meeting. Item H, the Telecommunications Advisory Commission held October 23rd. And item I, the City Treasurer's report on investments for November. 
Make I'll a motion move. to approve the miscellaneous reports and place them on file. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on those reports? Your Honor. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, on the Telecommunications Advisory Commission, item number 3A, it notes in there that it, uh, the last sentence, it is recommended that the ordinance provide provide that all franchise fee revenue be used to fund the budget of River City's community access, except as monies are specifically appropriated from those revenues for other city needs by the Common Council. Um, what are those identified needs? Uh, at present, I defer to the City Attorney, but my understanding at that Communications Advisory Committee, the Council always has final approval of the funds, the franchise, fees fun franchise fee funds uh, for any purposes they deem necessary. Right, actually, there's an ordinance that will be coming back uh, that will contain the dissolution of the commission and would probably contain that language. And I guess at that point, I think, I think the commission, some commissioners felt that that money should always be retained for telecommunications, but I think some commissioners also recognize that uh, the revenues usually exceed the expenses of telecommunica the telecommunications budget and that the city in the past has used some of that money and we would anticipate that in the future if there are certain needs and uh, we didn't identify those needs but that was just the language that the commissioners came up with but I when the ordinance comes back probably next month I think that would probably be a good discussion to have of what how you want the ordinance to read in terms of the the disbursement of those monies thank you Further discussion on the reports? All the person Kirkpatrick. Just one thing real quick. Coming out of uh, the fire report, fire department report, it should be noted here that uh, Chief Kirkman has, has made contacts here. He says, this month also brought another major change within the department. On October 1st, he was contacted by uh, Dan DeRoche. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Lead pastor, I'm sorry? Lead pastor from Woodlands Church goes on to say that Dan is a former firefighter EMT and expressed interest in becoming our fire department chaplain. So it uh, may seem kind of just something in passing to, to kind of, oh, hey, cool, look at that. But um, from my short time in, uh, in the Army and from the, uh, the things that I've heard from other service members, you know, military, police, fire, um, chaplains serve an important need not just for the spiritual health of the individual members but also just for the simple fact that you've got somebody else there to talk to if you've got a problem um, be it within the department or or of a personal nature so I think that's a really welcome addition to our department something that uh, probably has been lacking I don't know if uh, if chief you've got two excellent thank you and the fire chief did have to leave early for another uh, commitment he had this evening so unfortunately he can't speak to it any further discussion on the reports? Seeing none, please cast your balance. Motion carried. Seven A's and zero nays. Item 12, items for new business at the January 21st council meeting, which uh, according to this, there is nothing. Item 13, under ordinances. Item A, in ordinance uh, increasing the sewer fee uh, use fee as recommended by the Wastewater Treatment Commission at its December 4th meeting. See attachment number four. Okay, thank you. I've got a copy of the ordinance in front of me, um, which I can read that. A general ordinance amending sections 8076A and 8076C of the Wisconsin Rapids Municipal Codes entitled Sewer Regulation. Um, the, uh, this is for the charges levied on residential, industrial, commercial, institutional, and governmental users which discharge wastewater of strength equal or less than uh, domestic wastewater will be billed at the rate of $5 per 1,000 gallons from $4.75. Um, also equal to $3.74 or uh, formerly $3.56 per 100 cubic feet. Minimum monthly charge shall be $13.80, formerly $13.15. Uh, billing for usage or consumption shall commence after 748 gallons uh, has been used and shall continue at the $5 um, per 1,000 gallon rate. The city reserves the right to impose higher minimum charges for commercial, industrial, governmental, and institutional user, uh, users. 
the sewer charge for users discharging waste with BODs, T, uh, TSS, TKN, or total phosphorus concentrations in excess of the values for domestic waste water as, as defined in Section 801 of the ordinance shall be based on the schedule of the following costs as follows. Volume would be $5 per 1,000 gallon of BOD. Surcharge would be a 0 .680 from 0 .648. Uh, the total suspended solids are TSS. Jim, I knew that number, knew that uh, acronym. Surcharge from 0.534 cents from 0 .508. Uh, total phosphorus surcharge, uh, $5.898 from $5.617. And TKN surcharge, which I don't know, TKN, uh, 0.194 or 0.185 per pound. Section 2 is all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith are here, hereby repealed. Uh, section 3 is this ordinance shall take effect on January 1st, 2014. Council members, what are your wishes regarding that ordinance? We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? second. We have a motion and a second. If we could get the button, please. I'm not sure who that was, all the person realm. Discussion on that ordinance. Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. Please cast your ballots. Motion carried. Five A's and two nays. Item 14 is referral of communication to committees. We don't have anything in there. And uh, being that this is our last meeting in December, I wish, wish to wish all employees, council members, those watching at home, those here this evening, uh, safe, and holiday, safe and enjoyable holiday season, and we'll see you next year in January. We're not going anywhere before then, but we'll see you next month in the council chambers. Thank you. And entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to second. All in favor? Opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>